There's a hotel in Paris that's known as a rich woman's paradise. The quality of service is exceptional. It's almost like they're always there for you. Even that kind of request can be fulfilled. That's why rich women are willing to pay for it. Handsome Kroll is one of those who can fulfill that kind of request in this hotel. Kroll used to be a rich man's son. His father was a famous champagne magnate. But after decades in business, he ended up with a huge debt. He even lost his house. His wife didn't lose it, but she's no better than sharing. She was having an affair with Kroll's godfather. One day, Kroll's father couldn't take it anymore and killed himself. With his father dead, the mother had even less to worry about. She opened a small hotel with Kroll's godfather and raised Kroll in the process. Kroll had experienced a lot of ups and downs. You can be poor, but you can't get used to being poor. So, all he could think about was getting something for nothing. Learning that his godfather had worked in a rich woman's paradise in Paris, he used his mother's guilt over his father to blackmail him and forced his godfather to be an introducer. And he took money from the godfather to have a suit custom made. When Kroll put on the suit, he became a prince charming. He instantly attracted the attention of a girl. Her name was Zaza, though Kroll said he had a clean face, but his pocket was cleaner than his face. But Zaza didn't care. At the blow of a whistle, carriage arrived in front of them. Within five minutes, the two of them were doing something I've never experienced in my life. After their first taste, they couldn't get enough. And Zaza was particularly fond of role-playing. She played an officer inspecting a new recruit. But Kroll didn't realize that this scenario would actually happen to him. He was old enough to serve in the army. In order to avoid military service, Kroll was going to pretend to be epileptic during the medical checkup. But before he could start, the man in front of him stole the show. The man was so convincing. The Oscars owe him a medal. But it didn't work. The medical examiner saw it right away. They get a few smart guys like him every year. So send him to the front line as cannon fodder. Since epilepsy didn't work, Kroll found another way. He pretended to be an extremist and said he'd wanted to be a soldier since he was a kid and he practiced shooting at home. His father was shot to death while he was practicing shooting. This kind of extremist is prone to chaos on the battlefield. The officer rejected Kroll outright. So he escaped the military service with his ingenuity. After three days and nights with Zaza, Kroll finally remembered what he had to do. So he went to the Paris Hotel to start his job. Because of his formal attire, the lobby manager thought Kroll was a guest. When he heard that Kroll was a new employee, the lobby manager told him to go where he belonged. And that place was the waiter's quarters on the top floor. A colleague introduced Kroll to the working environment here. The accommodations are terrible. The food is terrible. If you're caught slacking off, you get your pay docked. There's no money to be made. Are you ready? It's not that they don't make any money. The main reason is that there's a foreman who takes their tips. Of course, Kroll does the same. Can I not? You can try. Not only the paycheck, but half of the extra money they make. Kroll, being a rookie, wasn't having any of it. The next day he went to the lobby manager and complained. When the lobby manager heard about this, he immediately called the head waiter over. He proved in front of Kroll that they were in cahoots. Kroll was left speechless, but Kroll couldn't believe it. In such a big hotel, is there no place for justice? So he went to the general manager to complain, and the general manager gave him a life lesson. There are over 200 employees in this hotel. If we all pay high wages, the hotel can't afford it. But if they can't make money, they'll run away. So the hotel added some services that should have been banned but weren't. After all, the customer is God. How can we not satisfy them? Kroll seems to understand something. The general manager obviously wanted Kroll to sell his body. Although it's disgusting. But Kroll soon tasted the sweetness of it. Now he was in charge of opening the elevator doors at work. The next day Kroll met a rich woman. Seeing her looking so hungry, Kroll was finished. The rich woman asked Kroll to bring her things to her room. As the elevator operator, Kroll shouldn't have left his post. But the boss said the customer is God. The customer comes first. And the rich woman didn't let him help her for nothing. She gave him an expensive brooch, and then the rich woman started telling him about the hotel's toilets. Look how sturdy this toilet is. My husband made it. He is the toilet king of France. Her husband never thought that his wife would sit on his toilet and cuckled at him. Kroll got two pieces of jewelry afterwards. The foreman guessed the price just by looking at them. He gave Kroll the address of a pawn shop. The jewelry was worth at least 2,000 francs, but the pawn shop would have pushed it down to 800, then give me a 400 rebate. Kroll went to the pawn shop. He didn't expect the pawn shop to offer 300 francs. Are you mistaken? 250. This brooch is worth at least 1,000 francs. 200. Then go to hell. You'll be worth 50 when you get out of here. I just have to call my peers. No one's going to outbid me. Now I'm offering 150. The boss thinks he's got Kroll. Kroll's not angry. You're a businessman. But look at my face. But do you think I'm a one-time deal? That convinced the boss. He paid Kroll the rest of the difference. But Kroll didn't realize that he had run into some more robbers right after he left the house. Kroll pulled out a bill. That's all I have. Otherwise, I won't come back next time. When the robbers heard that, they didn't make a move. When he got back, Kroll gave half the money to the foreman. The foreman was impressed. From what he knew of the pawnbroker, 
200 francs was a lot of money for Kroll. Foreman didn't think Kroll could handle him. Now go on. The rich woman's been looking for you for a long time. But I'm off duty. Customer is God. Put on your uniform. Although she's very attractive. But Kroll is really tired. But of course, the rich woman won't treat Kroll badly. Take the pearls, they're all yours. Well come on then. I can handle it. Kroll's good looks and his ability to deal with the situation made him a favorite among the rich women and the leaders. Even some of the male customers were attracted to him. A familiar voice suddenly stopped Kroll. It was Zaza who came to see him. But she's not all about Kroll. Zaza needs to struggle too. She wants Kroll to help her. Kroll didn't hide anything. He recommended a marquee to Zaza. Zaza is also a veteran of love affairs. She went over to him and pretended to drop her glove. And the marquee fell for it. And when Zaza took the glove, she stroked his hand. Then she looked at him with deep affection. The marquee fell in love right away. For the days Kroll was a god. He lived between rich women and Zaza. I don't know what he eats every day. He felt like he had more energy than he could handle. The relationship between the leader, the pawnbroker and the robbers was handled very well by Kroll. The leader likes him. The pawnbroker welcomes him. The bandits protect him. Zaza wasn't idle either. In just half a month, the margrave has fallen in love with her. Kroll, on the other hand, the rich woman who's obsessed with him is having a hard time. Not physically. It's the expense of being with Kroll. All the jewelry she brought with her. And now all that's left is a necklace. It's just that Kroll is so attractive. The rich woman also hated that she didn't bring enough jewelry. When the last necklace was consumed, the rich woman could only leave the hotel with hatred. Yes, that's right she couldn't even afford a tip. But it was Zaza who saw through it. She was in love with Kroll, but she knows that love doesn't pay the bills. Zaza made it clear that there was no future for them. This made Kroll feel inferior. He secretly vowed. I must hold on while my kidneys are good and my body is good. And give Zaza a good life. But Zaza thought that Kroll's life was as unstable as a wave. He didn't realize that the next day the opportunity would come. A rich man wanted to invite Kroll to be his estate's housekeeper. And the job was easy and well paid. All he had to do was serve him and his friends. But the tycoon didn't seem to have the same idea. Kroll said he'd have to think about it. Well, he didn't say no. Doesn't that mean it's acceptable? In the meantime, the foreman found a new young woman for Kroll. But this time Kroll refused. He knew that the young woman was not even a teenager. Although he could provide this service. But Kroll had his limits. He told the young woman, I was forced to do this by the foreman. If I didn't go down, the foreman would fire me. He sends me to the rich women's room eight times a day. Now there's not a drop left. You're still young. Don't let the foreman encourage you to go down the wrong path. The rich girl was touched and said she'd help him. So the next day, the rich girl reported the maitre d'. She said the foreman had molested her. It was a serious matter. The foreman was fired on the spot. No more trouble from the foreman. Kroll took the opportunity to make friends with the Marquis. Recently, the Marquis had a problem. His father knew he was in love with an unknown woman. So he's arranged for him to travel the world and see the world. If he doesn't agree, he'll lose his allowance. The idea was to cut him off from Zaza. Isn't it a good thing? What could be better than traveling around the world? But Marquis said, I can't take Zaza with me. What's the point of having the whole world without Zaza? So Kroll told him his story. He had a great desire for freedom and wealth. But when Kroll came to the story of Zaza, he changed Zaza's name to some other alias. So the Marquis thought he didn't know Zaza. After listening to Kroll's story, the Marquis suddenly realized, so you'll travel the world in my place. I'll pay you another 20,000 francs. You got freedom and money. And I can spend a year in secret with Zaza. That's a good offer. Money and fun. Kroll agreed without hesitation. When he returned, he turned down the rich man's offer to hire him as a butler. The next day, on a train traveling around the world, the Margrave's father put the Margrave on the train himself. He promised to do as he was told and to stop hanging out with those wild women. When the train started, he couldn't wait to take Zaza with him, but just as Kroll wished her happiness, Zaza suddenly hesitated. She looked at the two men with a sobbing voice and didn't know what to do. At that moment, the not-so-wise Marquis suddenly realized, the girl in your story is Zaza. Kroll acquiesced, but the Margrave didn't get angry. A warrior of pure love has his own mind. Margrave said, because I've heard your story, I know Zaza better. In the end, Zaza decided to go with the Marquis. The Marquis is so rich and so stupid. There was no reason for Zaza not to choose the Marquis. After seeing his friend and ex-girlfriend leave, Kroll was sad for three minutes. Then he met a rich man as the Marquis. The two rich and powerful men got to know each other very well. The rich man invited Kroll to his native Portuga. At the rich man's house in Portugal, he met the rich man's daughter. And he was summoned by the king. With Kroll's intelligence, he easily gained the king's trust. At this rate, I'm sure he'll make his mark here.